Today, we're launching our brand new <laughs> mini... <laughs> Right, that was a train wreck. Um, the pub is downstairs, so hopefully we won't be interrupted now. And I can tell you about the exciting launch of our new project called Ponds and Pollinators. It's all about the things that we can do as individuals to help boost biodiversity in our gardens and help make an overall difference to a, a global crisis. It doesn't matter if your garden's tiny, it doesn't matter if you've got 13 hectares, there's always something we can do. And this little project is all about giving you little ideas on what you can do to boost biodiversity in your patch. And today we're talking bee hotels. So pollinators underpin human race's survival. They are estimated to pollinate around 70% of our fruits, vegetables and crops around the world. And to British agriculture they're worth an estimated £630 million every year, which is what it would cost to do the job that they do by hand. So did you know we have three different types of bee? We have the honeybee, the bumblebee and the solitary bee. In the UK we have one honeybee, 26 different species of bumblebee and over 260 different species of solitary bee. So before we go on to making the bee hotel, take a look at some of these pollinators that I recorded this summer. So, for those of you who don't know, this is a bee hotel, or at least it's my version of one. And these are for our solitary bees, who unlike our bumblebees and honeybees that nest in colonies, our solitary bees, as their name suggests, nest on their own. Now, the females will lay their eggs within these cavities and block them up with uh, mud and leaves. Now making bee hotels like this is a great way to help support our solitary bees through the winter. It gives them a ready-made place that they can breed and it just gives them a helping hand. Unfortunately, we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadows and through heavy pesticide use and a general change in climate, our pollinators are really starting to decline in numbers. However, by doing little garden projects like these bee hotels or maybe just letting your grass grow a bit longer in the summer, we can really help to change that general decline in population numbers. Originally, I had planned to give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to make a bee hotel like this one. However, a quick Google search found hundreds of instructional videos on how to make a bee hotel. So instead, I thought I would give you a few top tips on things to include in yours and then just show you a montage of me making my own. Firstly, when you're making your cavities in your stems, when you're hollowing out the stems, make sure you use a range of sizes between two and 10 millimeters in diameter and you want the length to be between 100 and 150 mil long. Try to hang it in a sunny south facing spot that's sheltered from the elements and ensure that there's no vegetation covering the front. You want to be hanging it around a meter off the ground. And finally, make sure that there's adequate food source and a water source nearby that the bees can use. And I'll be doing something later on pollinator friendly plants that you can plant in your garden for a year long pollinator season.
Now if you enjoyed this video then please let me know in the comments. Let us know if you have made a bee hotel of your own and share any pictures with us at our Wild Ancombe Facebook page. And I'll see you next time.